the closing of the book of Genesis contains a final reconciliation. Joseph and his brothers uh, are at peace uh, with each other in a story that's fraught with conflict between uh, the brothers and Joseph. The brothers sinned against Joseph. They betrayed him. They threw him into a pit. They sold him into slavery. But then Joseph ascends uh, in the house of Potiphar. He ascends in the prison as kind of a quasi prison warden. And then he ascends to the vizier of Egypt being this, this king of Egypt. Um, and as we've discussed before, uh, I, this undoubtedly represents Christ. This is a figure of Christ. Uh, I, I was actually talking about typology with a friend of mine uh, recently. And this, this is a typology that's not in the Bible. We don't have Paul saying, Joseph is a figure of Jesus. We have to use our Holy Spirit inspired reason and come to these conclusions because the shape of his story looks very similar to Christ. And Christ tells his disciples on the road to Emmaus all that was in the Old Testament containing him. So if Joseph is a type of Christ, which I believe he is, and I, I stand stoutly in the Catholic tradition uh, with the rest of the church teaching this as well, then there's a sense in which his brothers are us. We are the ones who have sinned against Christ and we've been reconciled with him. But there's another sense, and this is the more I almost think that this might be the primary, the primary sense. Um, his brothers are the Jews who sinned against him and who finally have reconciliation with him. The Jews are going to be converted eventually. The Jews sinned against Jesus. They threw him into a pit. Jesus ascends as king over the Gentiles. And then in the latter part of the story, they're reconciled. And Paul talks about this. All of Israel will be saved. They're taken out. Gentiles are put in it, put in. And this is what I want to emphasize today. When Paul says that, there's a lot of talk about the Jews recently. He says, they were taken out so that you can be saved, but you can be taken out too. So don't boast. Right. Because you don't support the root. The root supports you. And the root is the root of Jesse, who is who? Christ. Christ is the root. Christ supports us. And so them being taken out is not a, an occasion for us to boast. There's occasion for us to fear that we don't get taken out and that we pray to Christ that he bears fruit in us. We're a branch put on the tree. Lord Jesus Christ, please give us the ability to bear fruits in accordance with repentance Amen. so that we're not taken out. And what happens when branches who don't bear fruit what, are they, what, what happens to them? What, is, what does Jesus say? Or John the Baptist? I can't remember. Thrown to the, the fire. They're not good for anything. Jesus comes to the tree. It's, it doesn't have fruit. He curses it, right? You've got to bear fruit. God wants to eat his food. And that's us. So we ought to have more fear of God with this mystery of the Jews coming in, our older brother. We ought not to boast. We are the chosen people. Those who curse us will be cursed, and those who bless us will, will be blessed. We are true Israel. But our older brother Esau, our older brother Ishmael, still is beloved for the sake of the patriarchs, just like they were too. God gave Esau a kingdom. He gave Ishmael 12 sons who were princes. The, the Israelites still maintain a soft spot in God's heart. That's what Paul tells us. So we don't want to be boasting over them, even when they're wicked. What does David do? Da what does David do to Saul? The Jews are Saul, we're David. David doesn't touch Saul. Saul is a bad, bad guy. Yeah, wicked man. He's trying to kill him. And David's like, I'm not going to touch God's anointed. Well, Paul tells us the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. They're irrevocable. So we, we are in a time of cursing. We are being in a time where we're all being turned into fierce devils and we need to resist these, these uh, movements. I would say they're demonically inspired movements to get us to hate and scapegoat Jews and other people. Yeah. Yeah. Christ, Christ died for us. He, he all, he, he's the last person that needs to die for anybody. 
This reminds us of our need to confess. 